Hello people, welcome to my channel and in this video lecture I am going to talk about two very very important topics when it comes to the unit 6 of new syllabus that is English in India, history, evolution and future. In the previous few videos in the crash course series, I have discussed some really really important information. I have talked about the role of missionaries, the Charter Act of 1813, the role of two great leaders Thomas Bevington Macaulay and William Bendick. Apart from that, we also looked at the social activist Raja Ram Mohan Roy and the other leaders from the Indian nationalist movement who helped to spread English across India. But this evolution of English language cannot be summarized unless and until we talk about Wood's dispatch and we also talk about the most important commission that was made in order to propagate English language in India. We are going to talk about that very shortly but before that I would like you to note that we have updated our online course as per the new syllabus and we have listed all the important writers topics in detail on our website. So if you are preparing for UGC net and you are not looking forward to join any coaching class then you can go to our website and check out the detail list so that you can plan your preparation accordingly. Also if you have not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel I think you can press the bell icon right now because we are going to upload many more videos on the new syllabus topics so that you can prepare for the upcoming net exam in a fantastic manner. So without wasting any more time let's jump right into the topic and let's see what is this Woods Dispatch. Woods Dispatch of 1854 played a significant role in educating masses in English language but then who was this uh, Mr. Wood who wrote Wood's Dispatch. The full name of Wood was Charles Wood and he was the one who wrote Wood's Dispatch. At times people say that it was actually written by John Stuart Mill. John Stuart Mill is a great essayist who was writing during the Victorian time in England and he wrote a very very important pamphlet come essay that was titled as Subjection of Women and that work became a significant work in the feminist movement just like we had Mary Wollstonecraft similarly we have John Stuart Mill who wrote works in order to support female rights. Now here when we are talking about Wood's Dispatch, you need to understand that in Wood's Dispatch, Charles Wood said that Indian languages along with English together can help to spread education across India. So Indian languages and English should go hand in hand in order to educate the masses. You cannot educate the masses only on the basis of English language. So on one hand we have Thomas Macaulay who says that English should become the medium of instruction and if you look at Macaulay's minute you'll find that he is specifically talking about educating the elite class but on the other hand Mr. Charles Wood is talking about educating the masses and that is why he says that we need to take Indian vernacular languages and English language together. Another important step taken by the British government to impart English education was the Indian Education Commission of 1882 which is now popularly known as Hunter's Commission. Now what is this Hunter's Commission? Hunter's Commission was basically a commission which was headed by the chairman called William Hunter. Now this man William Hunter, he focused on both the primary education as well as the secondary education and he pointed out some challenges which are being faced by Indian people in both these sectors. As far as the primary education sector is concerned, he said that primary education should be handed over to the municipal corporation and to the district level supervisors and they should look after the primary education and primary schools. Whereas when it comes to secondary education, he said that secondary education is doing really well. Why? Because private schools are heading uh, and they are taking charge of the secondary education sector. He said that every one government school has two private schools. So if we compare a government school ratio with private school ratios, then we'll find that the ratio is one is to two, two private schools and one government school. So he said that it's important that 
we hand over the supervision of secondary education sector to the private enterprises because they are doing really well in this field. Apart from that, he also mentioned in the commission that it is important to focus on physical activities and on moral development of the students. And for this, he said that a series of lectures should start uh, in which the principal or the vice principal of the school should go to the classes and talk to students about how a man should behave. So what should be the code of conduct that should be explained to students very clearly because moral development is important and it is not something that can be neglected. These were few important ideas given by the Hunters Commission and you would find that because of all these commissions, all these acts that were uh, taken or, and all these initiatives that were taken by the British government, a lot of improvement happened in the education system and the improvements was rooted so much that even today we are following the same things. We have not yet developed a proper Indian education system. We are still following the education system that was imparted by Britishers, that was given by Britishers to us before independence. When it comes to English in India, it is also important to look at the role of English language during the independence movement or the nationalist movement and we also need to look at the status of English language post independence. You would be surprised to know that during the independence movement at one point we were supporting Swadeshi movement in which the leaders said that we need to support the uh, culture tradition of India and we need to boycott anything that is western in nature. But on the other hand, you find leaders like Mahatma Gandhi who were writing in English in order to put forward their messages in front of the British government. So during the independence struggle, we find that at one point English was rejected and on the other point English was accepted as the medium of communication. Similarly, if we look at the present state of English, you will be surprised to know that in India only 3% to 4% people can communicate in English. In spite of the fact that 3% people can speak English, India is the third largest English speaking country uh, coming just after UK and USA. There are a lot of other important facts when it comes to English in India, which we discuss in detail in the online course. You can go to our website and check out the detailed list of writers and topics that we cover in our online course. And uh, if you like the list, you can even think about joining the course. Also, I would like to suggest you at this point that we are going to make many more videos on the topics that were recently introduced in the syllabus. So if you want me to make any videos specific to your needs, you can put that in the comment section below. Apart from that, don't forget to share this video in all your social media platforms. You need to also uh, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you are notified every time I post a new video. That's it for this video lecture. We'll meet soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarwa.com.